Hey, Amanda, we'll start with this. Uh, did you get any sort of explanation on the on the yellow card, the Malia Will Don nope. thing, and, and what was your thought on it? What did you see? Well, normally players can't throw another player off the opposition team down. They can't do that, but that's one singular play. That's not the reason why everybody in that locker room is down. Um, you know, again, referees have a tough job. Whatever they saw on the replay, whatever you guys saw on the replay, you guys can talk about that. I thought Christian had, you know, position. He didn't really jump for it. Referees make the decision. We live by the decision. We can't, I can't control that. None of the players can control it. Actually, the fans can't control it either. Or you guys in the media can't control what Ishmael saw. So I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's a big issue. It's not why we lost the game. Boss. Brian, just the importance of playing a full 90 minutes, because it looked like there were times that, uh, yeah, just playing, staying focused for 90 minutes. Well, that's the message that they get practically every game. But look, it's pro sports. And you can either, A, compliment your opponent on goals that are well constructed, or you can say your team made critical errors in critical moments of the game where they weren't focused, or you know, a technical piece of their game was off, or something like that. Again, what I would re reiterate is, you know, we can't give teams, good teams like Kansas City, any gifts. Now, they're going to say that the first goal was a well-constructed goal, but it was a scramble and, you know, blah, 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 blah. They're going to say the second goal was, you know, well-constructed play. They drew us out. They split five of our guys and all of that. They're going to say those were well-constructed goals. What I'm telling you, Maz, is that we need to be better in those moments. Because you ain't going to win anything. You ain't going to win championships if you give goals away. You have to make it difficult on your opponent to score. There's so much talent in that locker room. There's so much desire in that locker room. If you watch, you know, the second half, the start of the second half, they came out. We were so good. It was unfortunate we couldn't get a second goal. They put everything into the game. And then to your point. Is it one lapse of concentration? Is it one little technical thing? Is it one little thing that allows your opponent to get back in the game? And that's pro sports. That's why everybody in that locker room is in here. They feel, they feel horrible. They put their heart and souls into the game, and I commend them for that. But we came up short. That's the reality. How much you're such a competitor, the team is a competitor, how much are you looking into the film and really looking tactically. We're going to watch that film and the goal is for sure. Individually and collectively. And then we're going to watch some of the good things that we did. And some of the good effort plays and the hustle plays and Christian, you know, just busting his butt every, you know, every chance he could and Will Bruin doing a good job and JP and Kellen had a good game today. I mean, there were plenty of good moments too. All of the good moments isn't going to erase what I feel, what they feel in here. It's not going to erase it. So we're going to watch. We're going to learn. We're going to trust our process. That's what we do after every game, win or lose. And we're going to have to get back up on the horse and play against a you know, team that's in good form. And we'll see what we get. Other questions in here before we go up to Zoom? Okay, Matt, go ahead. All right, uh, we'll start with Jada Evans from the Seattle Times. Thanks, thanks, Brian, for taking this time. Um, I wanted to ask if we could, like, maybe pull out a little bit. Uh, you know, the the is this more of like a becoming more of a, a modern day kind of real rivalry with you and Sporting? Um, it seemed, you know, very intense today, even aside from uh, the Malia uh, incident. And the past matches. Yeah, Jada, it's a good question because guys in the room that have been here for a long time, I mean, that rivalry could have started, you know, 2013, the U.S. Open Cup. There was some drama, you know, their goalkeeper, 
you know, penalty, Zach Scott, you know, that, that could have gone to 2013. I believe I read somewhere in our crack media thing about Kansas City was the first team to beat us in MLS play in 09. So, J.D., your question's not far <laughs> off. Uh, they're a good side. They're well coached. There have been competitive games. But I would say that this game was just like a playoff game. And we're going to make sure that Tuesday is just like a playoff game. And then the Galaxy game is going to be a playoff game. You're going to see a team that's ratcheted up because we understand it's coming down to the end of the season and it's money time. If I can follow up, um, you're, you won't have uh, Yao Paulo for the, the next uh, match, but also that's a, a quick turnaround um, how much of an effect do you think that'll have uh, on the LAFC? Well, we'll miss JP for sure. He's a tremendous player. But the next guy is going to step up, Jada. That's, that's been the mantra here at this club for a long time. So the next guy is going to step up. We've dealt with a ton of adversity. We've been missing key players all season long. It's no different now. Next guy, the expectations for the guy that steps into JP's shoes is they work. They work smart. They work hard. You know, that's that that's going to happen. I can guarantee you that. John Lupo, go ahead. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Brian, the the performance overall was, I thought, uh, pretty pretty damn good. And do you think that if you can just bottle that performance, especially in the second half, and take that into the next few games, do you feel like that you'll be able to get the results that you want? Well, not unless, to Maz's point. We fall asleep in the fourth minute and the 79th minute or whatever it was. I mean, that's critical. I mean, I was pleased with the way we came out in the second half, John. I thought they put a lot of energy into the game. We had chances. We were creating chances. We were dangerous. We looked dangerous. So, yes, I would like to take those good moments of the game, translate that into Tuesday and throughout the rest of the year. Felipe Miqueira. Coach Brian, uh, my question is to you is, how is the team doing with uh, the courage, the passion, the hearts? Seems like uh, after the uh, the play where Christian Roldan and the goalie got into it, uh, the team performed a little bit better. The energy went up and, and the team was fighting the ball. And how is the, uh, the team in that department? I, I, Felipe, respectfully, respectfully, you know, it wasn't just after the play with Christian and the goalkeeper. They scored a goal in the fourth minute, which, you know, credit to them or us not starting as well as we could. Then they played a style or their first, you know, 10, 15 minutes, we were out of sorts with our house shape. So we flipped into a diamond and I thought we figured things out a little bit in the first half because I thought the last 10, maybe 15 minutes of the first half, I thought the team was playing much better. And then we made some further adjustments in the second half and we came out in the second half right from the whistle and played well. So it wasn't till just the altercation that I believe our team started to play better. I think they caught us with an early goal, which helps. We caught a hold of the game, and then we gave up another poor goal. That's the summary of the game. Alonzo Contreras. Thank you, Matt. Uh, how are you, Coach? I know it's a tough loss. Uh, coach, this is the fourth time that your opponent scored first at Lumen Field, and Sanders doesn't come back. And I, and I say this because uh, Thunder has a good chance to play a home during playoff. So why is the team is doing wrong in those situations that it's getting so hard for, for them to come back? If I'm understanding your question correctly, uh, I believe there's another stat that in MLS, when a team scores first, they have a bigger chance of winning the games. I also believe, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, that our club has a fairly good record when opponents have scored against us first and we seem to find a way to come back to either get a point or three points. 
And I believe, Alonso, that's because of the character of the players in that locker room. They never quit. They never quit. So we always give ourselves a chance to, you know, come out with something. What I would say to your question is that, you know, Aviana Header, Christian, the crossbar, all the chances we created after even they went to 2 1 is again credit to the players in that team and they don't quit. So again, they scored an early goal, credit to them. Or we will do better next time. But that is pro sport. Sometimes that happens. What I'm proud of is the way those guys fought after they scored the early goal and how proud I was that they still didn't quit when the opponent scored a goal, which again, for a lot of teams, you know, would have, you know, just slowed down, but our team rose up. So we have one more on Zoom uh, from Jada Evans. Jada, go ahead and ask your follow-up. Thanks, I just wanted to see if there's an update. Um, is Raul back? Not yet, Jada, pretty soon, a couple hours. I'll watch flight I'll watch the flight tracker. I know there's a <laughs> I know there's a app out there. I'll 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 get his I'll get his uh, exact flight for you. Okay. 